You're listening to the Conduit to Can Do It podcast, the show that shares riveting real life stories curated from startup entrepreneurs and innovators to Fortune 100 corporate leaders who found ways to navigate their path to success. I'm your host, Dennis G. Shaver, founder of Conduit to Can Do It. And you'll hear firsthand accounts how our special guests have turned their bottlenecks into breakthroughs and triumphs, sharing their insider methods, strategies, and roadmaps that will inspire powerful transformations. Welcome, listeners, and we're excited to make this special podcast available to you today. In fact, with us today is someone I've known for quite some time. Her name is Lindy Eldridge, and we're excited to have her with with us today because she's a keynote speaker, a mentor, and a coach, and an author. In fact, when Lindy is present, I'm sure you'll agree she is very contagious with one of the happiest people that I've known around the world. In fact, she's absolutely a product of her branded mentor program. So with that said, welcome, Lindy. How are you doing? Oh, Dennis, thank you so much. And I have to share with you, you bring such smiles to me. It's, it's amazing. So my, my clue for everybody is hang out with happy people like Dennis. I appreciate that very much. In fact, uh, there's uh, my thought is that as well is that uh, to raise the bar in life is to to uh, hang out with people who help you rise above. And and certainly, uh, Lindy, you do that. And I know you've been through some challenges in life, but if I could put it in these words, it seems as though you found a way to get from breakdowns or bottlenecks to breakthroughs. And I know you've got a, a couple of uh, unique stories to share here, so we're really excited. I know you're a busy lady because you know you're asked to uh, mentor and coach people and speak and so forth. So let's start with a with the first question we have today uh, for you, for our listeners, and that is, what was the initial spark that got you to the level of success that you're at today, Lindy? Um, I really invested in myself, Dennis, to be honest with you. I came from a, a very dark, toxic background. I was gr- When I grew up, it was in a very domestic, violent situation where everybody attacked me and they told me that I was worthless instead of I had worth. They told me every negative thing that a person could be fed. And um, long story short, it was back in 1986 when I heard Les Brown speak on a television that was very, very heavy. (laughs) And he, you know, if if people will pay attention to the signs in life, there will always be those opening doors to free you from where you are if you feel you're in a bad space. Les Brown on the television said, you have greatness within you and don't allow anybody to steal your thunder. And when the when the student's ready, the teacher appears. And those words changed my life forever. And I started investing in myself, going to many different seminars, being a student of not only Zig Ziglar, may he rest in peace, Jim Rohn, may he rest in peace, and so many other phenomenal mentors that I gravitated towards. And I started building my self-worth to make me um, accomplish the things that I believe that I could do. And it's all came true because I opened up the window of opportunity. I took off my blinders and I fed myself positive affirmations and let go of everything that was said about me. You know, that's interesting you share that. And I too also listen to those wonderful people uh, I, rather often uh, in my spare time. And uh, you brought up something unique here. Uh, you said talking about signs in life and those signs of life folks can actually show up when you're sitting in a stoplight and a truck drives by and it says one word on it, change, or it says a word on it says it's getting better. It, it can come up in many different ways. Wouldn't you agree, Lindy? 100%. And I want to share with everybody that when you speak with the universe, which is something I do very often, and I speak to God, and I ask them for certain things. It comes to me, but not the way that I was asking for it. So I want people to understand and be in tune with, you could be asking for something, and it's coming to you, just not the way you expected it. But go with it, because that's what God intended you to do. And I am not religious, I'm just spiritual. 
And when you do that, it's amazing the doors that start opening up for you when you accept the direction that is, is being open for you. It, it, it's amazing. And well, it changes your life. Right. Oh, absolutely. In fact, speaking of uh, doors opening up, uh, I understand that you've written a book, right? I've written several and I've co-authored in several, yes. Okay, so what is it that, that has helped you as a result of stepping up to the plate in, in an area of opportunity and actually choosing to write a book? This must have been a door opening for you and it's probably opening doors for you. Can you kind of share one of those journeys with our audience? Absolutely. So my first book that came out was in 2009. It's my journey with domestic violence, growing up in it, marrying into it and uh, dealing with it, but overcoming it. That's the, all of my books are inspiring for you to overcome. And what was that light that made me um, write a book? It's because, believe it or not, it was my former husband <laughs> that said to me, you need to write a book. And I said, write a book? I said, what would I write about? And he said, and I said, what, what, how would I start it? And he said, once upon a time. <laughs> well, it was really crazy because I didn't know whether I should write about my business success or my personal life. And I looked up at the universe and I said, what am I supposed to be sharing? And it was quite clear. It was my purpose in life, which now brought me to be in the chief happiness officer of the happiness jungle and sharing with people how to get out of their light. So that was my first book, how I overcame the negative in my life and made it all a positive. And I found out what my purpose was. Let's talk more about the purpose because there's a turning point, I believe, that happens mm -hmm. when we get to that aha moment that's either mm -hmm. I've had enough or, oh my gosh, here's an opportunity. Can you mm -hmm. share a little bit of that with us in terms of where you had that, that evolution, that, that aha moment that caused you to evolve into um, what, where you are at today, especially with this title you call The Happiness Jungle, that's really cool. It makes me smile every time I read it. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. And now I'm also a TV personality and I have my own TV show. So mm -hmm. lots of things could happen to you. So how do you figure out what your purpose is? And that goes very deep back into your childhood with what you loved, what you loved, what you felt internally of whether you were a creator, whether you were an inspirer, whether you were a numbers person, it's already in you, your purpose. It has to take that inner sight of you, which is going into the self-help and learning more about you instead of what's outside of you, it's what's inside of you that will help you realize that there's nothing in this world that happens to you, it happens for you. So along my journey, when I kept on thinking, what am I, what is my purpose? It was very clear to me that it was helping others get out of their situations to help them de-stress because that's what I've always done. I've always learned, well, if they don't want me to do it this way, I've got to do it because I feel like I have to do it. And I always figured out a way to accomplish what I wanted because I'm a solutionist. That was a clue. That was a clue. So for everybody out there that's still trying to figure out what is it that you're trying to do, you already have it. It's just going to take you a little time to bring that out. And if you would like to call me and I will share a 30 minute, absolutely free consultation with you, I promise you <laughs> in that 30 minutes, we are going to start uh, like an onion, uh, just peeling away the layers. And then you're going to say, oh my God, I could feel it. And once you feel it, then you go with it. Yes, and much like peeling an onion, you might even shed a few tears, but that's where the evolution happens, right? 100%. You have to empty it in order to refuel. Right. You know, that's a really good point. In fact, uh, you mentioned the point about what happens uh, uh, for you versus done to you. And if you really look at it, if we could put it this way in terms of challenges and opportunities that show up in life, it's really about how we respond to it versus react to it. We, that's a choice, and that, that choice is 100% up to you, no matter what's happening to us. It's always, a re it's always our opportunity to choose to respond or react. Wouldn't you agree? 
100%. It wasn't, it was about eight months ago where my other book came out and it's my journey with the breast cancer. And it's very inspiring to get you through these challenges of health. And um, it was amazing. When I was told I had the breast cancer, I did not feel anything. I didn't feel anything. I went to the doctor for a normal checkup and they told me that I had the breast cancer. And I looked up at God in the universe and I laughed with them. And I said, what is the purpose? Well, obviously, the purpose was for me to write a book with a workbook in back of it, and now I'm invited on medical platforms, conventions, and it's just mind-blowing that when you look at your life and say, oh my God, this happened to me, blah, blah, blah. No, it happened for you. Take it and run with it. It's a trophy. It's a trophy. And... Um, so everything that comes into my life, I never look at it as a woe is me. I look at it as what is the purpose of this? And let me just take this because this is when one of my inventions came out and, and repurposed invention, if I will. Um, when in, in 2017 was my tornado year, I became a caretaker of my mother who was very, very abusive. And then in September, I found out I had the breast cancer. Three weeks into radiation, I got a divorce. <laughs> wow. And But at, at that point with the divorce is when I came out with one of my other solutions for others to sleep at night the way I've been sleeping for the last year and a half without missing a night's sleep. So everybody, you've got something inside you that there's already a solution for others and you've already created it. You're just afraid to take that next step. So, so let's talk about that next step. First of all, I want to thank you for sharing your story. It's amazing what, what uh, we as human beings can withstand, uh, even if we choose not to, uh, we still have to withstand it. It's just a matter of how we, we evolve through it. And, you know, there's, a, there's the, the, the topic of this, uh, this talk today is uh, how to become a conduit to your can do it. And clearly, you have done that in many, many ways, and even through the challenges you've faced. So for the people who are listening today, be it in business or their personal life, where is, what can be a great starting point, just from this, this point forward, to make that shift? No matter where that, they could be leading an organization as a CEO. Uh, they could be uh, trying to write a book. They try, could be trying to get through a relationship challenge or, or enter, entering into a new challenge. Mm -hmm. What is that mind shift, that thing that you need to start thinking about evolving from where you're at to where you want to be? Mm, I love that question. I love, love, love that question. Thank you. So, yeah, it's, it's a matter of the next step, which means mentoring. I have mentors. I hired, you know, uh, Zig Ziglar and Jim Rohn. I was their student. I showed up. So in order for you to get to the next step, if you're stuck, I highly recommend personal development and the mentor that mostly resonates with you. Oh, absolutely. I totally agree. In fact, uh, mentoring is very, very important because it's sort of like, um, you know, if you want to learn how to play racquetball or tennis or some other type of a sport, usually they say play the game with somebody who's much better than you or has been around the block that can give you some pointers. I mean, after all, why reinvent the wheel, right? Absolutely. And, and so it, it's important to do that. And um, I also wanted to share a quick story of myself as well as that many years ago, my late wife passed away and she was also pregnant with what have been my daughter, our daughter, uh, and it was of leukemia. And for many months, I just kept thinking, what am I going to do to move forward? She was the love of my life. And so I would go out jogging every day. And one particular day, I just was just tired of being tired. I was really exhausted and thinking, I can't have her anymore. All I can have is the thoughts of her. Her name was Georgia. And as I was running one particular day in a, a, a warm, sunny day in uh, Ohio, I was running up a hill, and I thought to myself, how do I shift? How do I shift from what was, what is, to what is possible? And the words that just showed up like that was, if it is to be, it really starts with me. Mm. I can't go anywhere else. It has to start from the neck up, and that's the mindset. 
the mindset that says something is truly possible here. Something is possible for me to become a conduit to moving forward to be that can do it. And folks, it doesn't need to be a major challenge or disaster for us to wake up to realize that we are so powerful here. And, and I'm not coming from ego, I'm just coming from heart here, that we are so, we have so much potential within us and when we realize that, that it's really a mindset thing to become a conduit to your can do it. And you don't have to experience the challenges like I have, or maybe you have, or maybe Lindy has, uh, but surround yourself with people and mentors and material materials and great YouTube materials that where people are sharing how to keep evolving forward, onward and upward. So uh, just some words of wisdom there uh, as Lindy's speaking here, because Lindy, I know I've, we've known each other for a long time and I've always had a big smile on my face when you show up because I know that you don't come from ego, you're real people and you help so many people from different walks of life, including corporations, small businesses, and even individuals who are perhaps stuck in the muck and trying to figure out how to evolve forward. So with that said, Lindy, what is it that some people seem to misunderstand about what you do for others? Um, people want things easy and nothing is easy. And, and Dennis, let me just give you kudos because you walk with no ego, no pride, and you are absolutely one of my mentors. And that's why I am about ready to hire you because you're the expert with something that I want to do. You're so kind. <laughs> no, it, it's absolutely true. So. The, the caveat here is whether you believe in yourself or you don't believe in yourself, who are you hanging out with? You are the five people that you are hanging out with. If you want to change you and you have something in mind that you want to do, you need to go where the people that have done it so you can learn from it and then take it where you want to go. So whatever I do, I'm a very conservative investor. Whatever seminars I go to, it's because the person on stage has accomplished what it is that I want. And I go with my pad and my paper, and I take notes like crazy, and I start applying it, and I start investing in myself to where my teachers are. Where are those mentors? And then I take it to the next step, and now we're a student. We are a student of life forever. So who's your teacher? Who are you hanging out with? Are you hanging around with Dennis? Are you, are you collaborating with, with what Dennis is teaching you? Because he's accomplished so many great things. That's who I want to hang out with. I don't want to hang out with people that are still trying to figure it out. So in the happiness jungle, my audience, my clients, my companies, uh, that I mentor, they come to me because I've already established the, the wealth and the knowledge of how to be happier in life, how to de-stress, not to look at it as I'm a victim, but I'm a victor. Yeah. And because I shine, that's why people hire me, because they could feel the authentic me. And that's the other thing. Be authentically who you are all the time. If you run into me at Walmart, you're going to meet Lindy, just like if you met me on a stage. No matter where I am, I am who I am. Wow, Lindy, you're absolutely amazing. I know we could, we could take so much more time up here um, to, to share more uh, great information on your behalf, and we really, really appreciate this. And we have uh, one last question here, if we could, for today, uh, and that is, what final words of wisdom something that really resonates with you that gives you the positive chills like of course i can what might you want to share with our, our listeners as a final wise words of wisdom today i want to share with everybody that fear is not your friend that fear should be able to fuel you notice the f f words that i'm using instead of fear i use fuel so what I encourage each and every one of you to do is to believe in what you believe in and take it to the next step, which is let your mentor show you that your idea is worthy because there is nothing in life that is new. We are all repurposing and we are reinventing ourselves so we could pull through the fear and know 
that there is fabulous, wonderful inspiration that each of you will bring because we are all very unique individuals and God never gave us more than we could handle. But when he feels that we've been pressured, he says, okay, okay, okay. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to let up. I'm going to let up. I'm going to give you an open window. Wow. Uh, Lindy, thank you so much. Those are amazing wise words of wisdom. And, and I've got a big smile on my face because I'm going, yes, yes, exactly. That's true. That's true. <laughs> so again, thank you for uh, taking some time away from your busy schedule to be here today. And uh, we hope to inv have you at a future podcast interview. I know there's so much more we can talk about. And again, thank you so much on behalf of our listeners and, uh, and uh, have yourself a great day. Thank you, Dennis. And I, we will be talking because I am hiring you because I have products in the work. Oh, yeah. That sounds like fun. Well, again, looking forward and looking forward to seeing you on stage real soon, okay? Thank you. I appreciate you. Thank you, Dennis. Bye-bye, everybody. Thank you. There you go. What an amazing talk on a very important topic. It's been my pleasure to share this episode with you, and this is just one example of how you can get one step closer to becoming a conduit to your can-do-it. Remember, no matter what you're embarking on in life and business, it's really about how you respond or react to everyday situations, and this can help you navigate your way to success. From this day forward, if it is to be, it really starts with you to choose to make the rest of your life the very best of your life. Thanks to each of you for listening today. And if you haven't had a chance to leave a review on our podcast, we greatly appreciate that as well. That's it for today. And I look forward to our next episode. Till then, onward and upward.